Learning target 3.12 says I can convert between grams and particles. Now, in learning target 3.2, we will have a two step conversion, which means we will need to use two conversion factors. Now, our first example says what is the mass in grams of 1.204 times 10 to the 24th particles of silver, AG? So we know we're trying to find grams, and we have 1.204, and I'm just going to say 1.2, that's what the CST will look like, times 10 to the 24th particles. Um, so we need to go first to moles and then to grams. Regardless, we always start by writing down our known value. So 1.2 times 10 to the 24th particles. And we know at the end, we want to end up with grams. So our first conversion factor, we know we're going to have to have particles in the bottom in order for our units to cancel. And ideally, we would like to have grams on top. But as we know, we don't have a conversion factor directly to go from particles to grams. So first, we will go to moles. And we know that if we have one mole, that's the same as 6 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And now we know that we can use the molar mass as our last conversion factor. So we know that if we have one mole of something, we can look at the periodic table to figure out its molar mass. And if you look, you'll see AG is about 108. So we can see we did this correctly because of our units. Again, stoichiometry is all about canceling our units. And we see that we did this correctly because we can cancel off particles and we can cancel off moles. Additionally, we see that we have 10 to the 24th and 10 to the 23rd in the denominator and the denominator. Like we said before, we can subtract these exponents and we'll get 24 minus 23, which is 1. So we can actually cross off the denominator here and rewrite in the numerator just 10 to the first, or 10. Additionally, let's take our next step by multiplying across so we have 1.2 times 10, which I'm actually just going to rewrite right away as 12 times 108 all over just 6, which is in our denominator. Again, if we can reduce these, 12 divided by 6, we can replace that with 2. And so we have 2 times 108, which is 216 and we are left with our unit of grams. So again, we take our known value and we put that first. Next, we're going to use Avogadro's number to multiply the known value times this conversion factor of one mole over six times 10 to the 23rd particles. And then we're going to multiply by the molar mass to convert this to grams. Now, in the second example, it asks us how many molecules are in 14 grams of C2H4. So we can see we're going in the opposite direction. We always write down our known value, so 14.0 G for grams. And we know, we, we know we're, want, we're going to want to end up with molecules. So again, this is going to be a two-step conversion. Our first conversion factor we know we need to have grams, and we can't go directly to molecules, so we're going to actually go to moles first. So we know that if we have one mole of something, we're going to look at the molar mass. And for C2H4, that would be 12 plus 12 plus 4, which is 28. So if we have one mole, 
that's 28 grams of C2H4. And then lastly, we know that our unit down here has to be moles. And we should know that if we have one mole of something, that's 6 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, which again is that conversion factor using Avogadro's number. The conversion that one mole is equal to 6 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, just like 1 dozen equals 12. We can cross off our units of grams and moles, and we can rewrite this underneath. So we know that if we have 14 times 6 times 10 to the 23rd, all over 28, we can see pretty clearly that 14 over 28 is 1 over 2. And then 6 over 2, we could just rewrite as 3. So we have 3 times 10 to the 23rd, and do not forget about our units, which in this example is molecules. So I'm going to scroll down here. You can pause right now if you want to. Otherwise, pause as you see these two individual examples. Complete them on your own, box in your answer, and when you're done, resume watching to check your work. So in number one, if you see it says what would the mass of 4.85 times 10 to the 24th atoms of helium B. And I crossed off this phi just to round it to 4.8, and you should get used to doing that on the CST if you need to, just like rounding to whole numbers. That makes sense, so you can estimate. Um, so I rounded this to 4.8 and then changed that to 48 times 10 to the 23rd atoms so that my 10 to the 23rds would cancel. Um, so I have my known value here. I have Avogadro's number and my molar mass. And after correctly canceling all my units and simplifying, I was left with 32 grams. Um, in this question, it actually said we have a mass of 94 grams of BEF2. How many molecules do you have? So I took my mass, um, 94 grams, and I knew that my unit down here is going to have to be grams in order for those to cancel correctly. Um, but I couldn't go to grams first. I had to use this molar mass and then cancel off my units of moles using Avogadro's number as the second conversion factor. Um, again, 94 here over 47. I reduced that to 1 over 2. Then I had 2 times 6, which is 12, times 10 to the 23rd. But once again, I had to actually change my base from 12 to 1.2. And then I increased my exponent to get 1.2 times 10 to the 24th molecules.